In this episode of our photography review show, we're going to review over 61 photos from 25 photographers. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our photography review show. I hope you had a great week and that you're ready for another set of photography reviews. For those who don't know me, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a professional photographer based in West Sussex, England. Now for the past two or three years I've been reviewing photos from my friends and colleagues and that's something what we decided to offer to our photography community here at Clever Photographer. Now it's been very very successful and for the last six months we've been receiving many many photos from many photographers from all over the world. Now because it's been so successful we were pushed to limit the entries to one or two photos per week per photographer and for the same reason we also take the show and divide it between two or three different parts. We usually look at the landscape photography in the first part then the mixed team photography in the second part and we look at the rest of the photography styles in the third and final part. Now we're gonna do the same this week but before we're gonna do that I wanted to remind you about our Facebook photography group it's called Clever Photographer and it's a great space if you want to come and join us, talk about photography, we answer your photos there, we run regular photography competitions and we also review your photos throughout the week. So if you want to join us, it's for free. All you need to do, head to Facebook, search for Clever Photographer Academy and join us today. But now because we have many photographers to look at, without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. And here we are with the first part of our show where we're going to be looking at landscape photographers. Now we have 11 photographers to look at uh, with many photos and uh, so we're going to go straight into it. But just a quick reminder, please make sure that you like this video, that you comment below, leave us any message you like and also that you follow our channel so we can keep continue offering content like this. So here we are, let's uh, jump straight to it, starting with Alan. Uh, just to kind of let you know, uh, we are inside of uh, Lightroom CC. Uh, that's where we review the photos. So any of the edits or any adjustments I do, I make in this application, if you're wondering or if you want to follow. So Alan, we have a two seascape captures, uh, which are very, very nice. So let's jump into them. So usually what we do, we start by looking at the technical part of the image. Then we look at the artistic part where we look at the composition and so on. And we finish it with a few tips for post-processing. So starting with this one, uh, let's have a look at it. Let's see if we have any camera details and we have. So they were both captured with Nikon D810. Uh, starting with this one, it was the 16 to 35 lens. And uh, let's have a look at the setting. So ISO 250, you use 16 millimeters, so wide, um, F11, one 400 of a second. Now, just looking at the numbers from first, uh, from a top of my head, obviously looking at it and seeing that it's quite kind of clear day, so daylight capture, definitely anytime you capture during the day, always make sure that you set your ISO on 100. There is no difficulty for the camera to handle that. And as long as your camera gear let you do it, stick with the 100 ISO. So you avoid to adding any um, additional digital noise or color noise. Um, obviously 250 isn't huge, but it's good to get the habit in um, so uh, straight from the beginning. Now uh, F11, which I always mention anything from F6 to F11 is generally kind of golden point for most of the lenses. That's uh, where the lenses perform the best. Um, generally speaking uh, anytime you go to the extremes when you go over to like f16s f20s or f4 f2 uh, the lens is starting to introduce um, sometimes uh, things like vignetting and distortion and uh, softness so uh, f11 is perfectly fine usually i go for f11 when there are kind of in immediate items in front of me things like rocks or any kind of elements like this so for this shot i would probably stick more to f7 however f11 is perfectly fine as well just making sure that everything is nice and sharp now looking at it like this um one 400 of a second is more than enough to make sure that uh, the, the picture is gonna be nice and sharp uh even handheld and everything is good there with the one 400 of a second you're also gonna get this frozen moment when the water 
water basically freezes and just stick to it and equally with the sky. If you would have an ND filter with you, you could have put it on, slow down the time a little bit, um, the shutter speed, and you could have get a little bit of more smoothness in the water. But uh, that's just something for future. So really looking at the numbers, the only thing I would uh, keep an eye on in these conditions is ISO 100 uh, to make sure that you really get the best quality of the picture you can. Now, looking at this one, uh, same thing pretty much, where uh, only difference is with this one that you went for the f-stop f7.1, which is totally uh, the choice I would go for. Again, ISO 250, so stick with the uh, 100 if you can and uh, there you have it so just kind of looking at both of the images from the technical part i really like the sharpness it's very very nice uh, lots of details lots of texture nice texture in the sky as well so the exposure is spot on nothing overexposed underexposed i think all in all both of them excellent captures technically and uh, well done so we leave it there alan uh, well done on capturing both and well done on this uh really i'm really impressed by the level of details coming kind of going all the way through uh, the sharpness is excellent. Now, um, moving on the artistic part of the image, uh, well, between two of them, um, this one is really nice. I tell you what, uh, I really like the frame in frame and the kind of cave. The only issue is that the light is pretty much same in it. So it comes across very kind of flat. It comes like it's all on top of each other. Um, Maybe what also helped to it, to that kind of overall feeling, is the fact that it has a very similar coral, so things kind of melt to each other a little bit. But this is where I would probably work a little bit with the um, local adjustments and maybe trying to make it a little bit darker, or at least these parts, and create a little bit of contrast to improve the depth a little bit, to get uh, to add a depth to it and uh, just increase the storytelling. Um, also, if you could have gone a little bit closer, and I don't know if you could, and maybe get a little bit more of the inside, it would also improve the depth and the overall storytelling. Now, um, what I really like is this rock there, which kind of gives us again sense of the depth, also gives us a sense of scale. Um, I like uh, the kind of initial view. I like the third of the sky being left there. I think all of that works very nicely together. It's just the overall contrast. Part of it is also the conditions. Obviously, it's a daylight. Um, the light is pretty much even all over the place. Um, but on the other side, there are no harsh shadows. So all in all, it's very, very nice. However, I think it needs a little bit of local adjustments to add a little bit of contrast. Now on this one, I like it a bit more because it has a flow through it. Obviously, uh, this part of the rocks really help because it adds a, a, almost like a leading line or definitely a flow. There is a lots of kind of elements all the way through, which again, really help with the depth. Uh, these two items creating this kind of almost like a canyon uh, also help to balance the composition and, and again, create a very nice story. So if I would have to compare the two, I like this one a little bit more when it comes to composition because there's more happening, uh, the elements are clean and they create really nice depth um, and it just works very nicely together. Now to finish it off, when it comes to post-processing, um, I really like the white balance. I think it's very natural and very powerful. Um, I like your sky. I like how it's a little bit soft. You know, it has the kind of soft, cloudy feel, even though there is lots happening there. Quite often photographers take this type of sky and really push the sharpness or clarity or texture, and it becomes unnatural because that's really not how the sky looks. But I really like what you've done on both of them. Uh, even though they were textured, they are still nice and soft and they don't take too much attention away from the rest of the image. So that's very cool. Uh, the shadows and highlights on both of them are really well balanced. Even inside here, I think it really works as well. The contrast is very nice as well. Uh, the saturation is nice as well. So uh, all in all, very well done. Now, I think really what would really push your photo even further would be the local adjustments. So in this case, let's just have a look quickly when we jump into the edits here. I would start with vignette, bringing the attention towards the center of the image and guiding the eyes through. Another thing is always good idea to add, for example, linear gradient and just kind of close the bottom of the image. So I would do something like this 
and create something like this. So, you know, it kind of gradiently kind of bringing you in. There is a little bit on the top already, but you can always just add more uh, again, just to close the image. And then you can just um, use radial gradient or brush to add some local uh, highlights. So for example, you can kind of highlight this part of the image with a little bit of extra exposure, and then you can just copy it. Um, and oh, I have undo it. So let me see if I can just copy this, duplicate, and then we can just push it somewhere like here. We can bring the attention towards this rock here. And then again, maybe right here. And then if you would really want to push the image, you can start to do some uh, um, uh, dodge and burn. So in this case, let's do some minus exposure and really just kind of highlight the darker areas of the image. So I always kind of overdo it and then I bring the slider back, uh, overdo it so I can really see what I can creating again here a little bit. And then I play with the slider. All in all, I, I think both of them are great captures. It would it would kind of apply the editing to both of them. And I think Alani, you have really something to be happy with because uh, it's well handled. If I would have to put the three things together, the technical, the composition and the, and the, the uh, post-processing it's well done so congratulations and um uh, well done moving on the next photographer we have alex dahoff alex two pictures from you uh two beautiful beautiful images uh, so let's jump into them and again let's start with the technical part so looking at this picture you are with your canon 6d mark ii uh, the lens was 11 to 24 uh, and the settings iso 100 13 millimeters f 7.1 1 640th of a second now this is spot on uh settings iso 100 exactly what we're looking for f 7.1 perfect uh, again usually one of the best Best values you can get the best and most out of your camera and then one six hundred forty second really kind of depend on what the condition were with the light and um, and and so on now um, just kind of looking at it like this obviously there is a lot of sharpness which is really good uh, there's quite nice light now looking at the edges of the trees um, you may be done some sky replacement or sky work here and in this area it's a little bit visible uh, and it is era as well. So just something to kind of keep an eye on. But what I really like is that I think it actually works together. Uh, I think uh, the color of the sky, the color of the background or the foreground and the main part are kind of match. Uh, maybe not exactly uh, by the luminosity. I think if the sun was behind, I don't know how exactly the shadows would work, but I think together it worked. So I would just keep an eye on the trees and see how you can maybe make sure that uh, the, the sky replacement all the sky editing is a little bit less visible but the sharpness is good the exposure is good um and the depth i'm just happy with in overall now let's look at this one um and why i feel like i've seen this image before however uh, same camera let's see a different lens i believe this is 24 to 105 uh iso 100 so again right there f9 yeah just making sure that everything is nice and sharp and 1 50th of a second which regardless if you had a tripod or no 1 50th of a second is the value where most of the time you can actually uh, get away with just handheld and uh, that's where you are so very very lovely panel i wonder how many uh, pictures were this together um uh, minimal noise in the sky just a little which probably coming more from the uh, from the color range rather than from uh, from the actual noise of your iso uh, very decent details there is a slight slight uh, softness to it at the back which could also be just from the uh, from the conversion into the jpeg so i wouldn't worry too much about it the light is obviously stunning there's a lot happening on the image the kind of big yellow glow in this area is beautiful the blue on the top is beautiful and then the darkness in the valley is great as well now i see some sensor dust here so it's something to kind of look at again in the description of the video you can find a tutorial on how to remove the sensor dust it's really as easy as just finding one and just kind of single clicking on it and that's usually what take care of it so just something for the 
future. Um, and that's about it. So technically, very well done. Now, since we're on this image, let's talk about composition. And even though I really like the panel, to be honest, uh, what it's missing? I think it's a little bit unbalanced. Uh, there is lots happening here. You're closing it with a full range. And on the other side, it's kind of ending some way. So I think if you would put this picture on a scale, it was definitely fall on this side. That's the one thing. Number two, obviously, there's a lot happening here. Um, and I think what we're missing is a sense of scale because the mountain and the rocks are so far, it's really difficult for the brain or for the viewer to realize how probably massive this guy is. So something what could kind of show uh, and help with the scale would be something that could be uh, really, really helpful. That's another thing I would add here. And of course, uh, really what it's missing is some significant um, foreground. Now you have a kind of foreground which is flat, so there isn't really nothing to set your eyes on then right there where you have main subject which is the middle ground and then you have this dramatic sky so it's not the wrong i'm just giving you tips on what would even more push the mm, the composition further now to make it more balanced it could be really as simple as uh cropping it on a side so you would probably get somewhere mm, like this and suddenly the balance become much clearer um but you don't have to uh to uh, and then for the scale you would probably need some kind of elements there so i wouldn't worry about it too much but it's just something what would really help now talking about this one and the composition uh, there is lots of think lots of things right here obviously the path really helped with the flow creating a nice leading line here uh really well done uh the rocks and the uh, and the trees and the stones really kind of create nice depth nice sense of scale and all in all uh it it really nice if you would have placed somebody here or somebody or something it would really have helped the sense of the scale because uh, even though you're looking at it like this you have absolutely no clue how big it is like this on the picture it looks like it's maybe one meter long tall but it could be probably several meters so i think that would be just something to maybe try next time try to put somebody there maybe facing away and uh, uh, just kind of add a little bit to it other than that i think it's very lovely the glow behind the sky the composition leading you in a center the leading line Excellent, Alex. Now, uh, talking about post-processing, on this one, I wouldn't add anything else other than seeing if there is a way how you can do the sky replacement or sky editing a little bit more careful so you can avoid this. This, this, and this. That's about it. Uh, the nice kind of vignette where the borders are a little bit darker, leading you in. The sky, I think, matches with the video, with the rest of the picture. The white balance is nice. The shadows and highlights are nice. The contrast is nice. So my only point would be mm, looking at the sky. On this one, I told you about how I would crop it a little bit differently. Keep an eye on your saturation because it's almost on the edge of being a little bit too much. Um, I don't don't know if in a reality it would be as defined so it's just something to kind of keep an eye on and uh, last thing for post-processing is to keep an eye on the sensor dust we all have it it's completely normal especially when we out and we kind of touring around with the photography however however uh you really need to make sure that you remove them in a post-processing anyway alex thank you so much for your images um they're great uh, it was a pleasure to review them if you have more photos make sure you send them over until next time take care and now we're looking at Eurico. Eurico, we have uh, two images from you a beautiful light at this time of the day so let's have a look so we have one right here and let's have a look at the technical details so nothing on this one nothing on this one Eurico, it's a little bit of a shame if you're gonna send us more pictures in the future try to see if you can leave the information of the camera in it because that always helps to help you a little bit further with the settings either way just from what i can see uh incredible light on both of them so well done i'm a huge fan of sunrise sunset golden hour uh photography um beautiful skies lots of texture in it so that's very well done this one almost on a silhouette like um silhouette like um style you don't really see much details on it but you at least you see the edges so that's very cool too um now looking at this one mm, lovely sun 
really defined. So when it comes to sun, usually as a photography, there are two different ways to capture them. One is really defined, like you've done here, uh, having a really sharp edges. The other one is to have it almost as a glow with very nice gradient coming from really yellow to um, kind of not so, not so yellow. Uh, and this define, I think, works very well here. Uh, and all in all, it's really nice. Now looking at the building, the sharpness is here. The texture again in the sky is nice. The light is nice. So all in all together, technically, I think I would recall very well done. Now, moving on the composition, starting with this one, I think there's a bit too much of a sky. I would probably crop it a little bit differently. Let's see. Um, you always kind of think about it like this. If it doesn't add anything to the overall storytelling, it probably doesn't need to be there. So, for example, this part where there is no lights, we could crop away to something like this. Equally here, uh, probably somewhere around here. And that way we bring the boat at least on one of the golden points. So you would get to something like this. And then what you want to make sure, you want to make sure that the horizon is uh, nice and straight so we can fix that in geometry, I believe. Yeah, that's about it. And that's about it. So when you look at it, uh, when I do this, you get, first of all, your kind of main subject, which is the boat, is on your uh, intersect of the lower thirds. So that's always good to follow in photography. Another reason why I cropped it a little bit down is that as a photography, landscape photography goes, it's good to do uh, two thirds of a sky, one third of the land, or the other way around, one third of the sky, two thirds of the land. And in this case, we are pretty much close. And I think it's just a little bit more powerful than this. I think it's lots uh, of it happening up there and there is no need for it. So I would probably go to something like this and that's where I would leave it. And then after that, it's very, very nice. The boat, the subject is clear. The message is clear. It's beautiful sunset. You feel like you want to be on holidays. You feel like traveling. Uh, brilliant. Well done. Now, moving on this one, uh, the building is tilting a little bit. So let's see if geometry will help us a little bit here with a little bit of auto. So I think that helped a little. Let's see if we can help more with guided. So we just want to make sure that this is straight and that this is straight too. Let's see. So then we get something like this, but then we can constrain crop it and go back to it. So we want to have the full building there. But again, we don't need all the sky and we don't need all the bottom. So let's say we do something like this. Now we can crop uh, some of this away again and maybe get the one third, two third, like I was saying earlier. And I think like this, it's a little bit more powerful. If we would crop it more on a side and have make sure that the sun is in the center. So maybe something like this then I think we get something even more interesting. So suddenly we're creating sense of depth with the building here, also with the buildings at the back. So suddenly you kind of get the idea that something is happening. The sun, which is a huge element on the picture, is in the center. So uh, nicely giving balance to the composition. And I think all in all, it works very well like this. So the two pictures are very lovely. I love your editing style. I love what you are doing. I think the, the white balance is nice and and warm and uh, uh, really working very, very well here. Uh, the highlights and shadows are a little bit on the edges, but I think still working very well. You can see some nice details here and it just works very well. Uh, and uh, even though the pictures are super saturated, I think they work, they're powerful and the result is excellent. So Eurico, thank you very much for sharing these photos with us. It's a pleasure to review them. And if you have more, make sure you send them to us in the future. Okay, so we have to move on a little bit uh, and we go into the next photographer where we have a Gary. Gary, uh, you sent us lots of photos, lots of beautiful photos. Unfortunately, because we have a many photographers, we can only review two of them. So let's say we review uh, this one and uh, maybe not this one. Let's see. Uh, this is, uh, this is, this is, this is, this um, is. Oh, in Italy. Oh, I will find out in a moment. That's a Ponte Vecchio, I believe. Uh, Venice, maybe not this one, not this one. 
uh, Eiffel Tower. No, so let's review two of those. So uh, that's a Florence, oh my God. A memory like an elephant. So moving on this one, starting with this one, let's have a look if we have any technical details and we have. And on this one, it was captured by an iPhone. Um, and uh, usually when you kind of look at the details of the capture from phones, they are a little bit different than you would expect them from a camera. However, ISO 25, F2.2, 1,900 of a second. So I think what was the most important to look at is that uh, there is the details which are very um, reasonable for uh, for the, the phone photo. Um, the light isn't the greatest. There is lots of harsh shadows, as you can see them in these parts. However, I really like the reflection array. So all in all, well done there. Now let's have a look at this one. So no camera details, however, a quite nice blur here. I really like the softness on the car. I think it gives you a sense of movement, which is great. Uh, the sky and the light is much nicer here. Obviously nice warm evening or maybe um, early morning, depends. Um, there is a little bit of glow around the actual, uh, I am assuming it's Arc de, Tri Arc de, Triumph, Arc de Triumph, maybe uh, it is. Um, and I think that's coming from a little bit of over processing or pushing the image also the white balance is just a little bit off i think i think this turquoise colors mixed with the rest of the image are uh, a little bit um a little bit unnatural but most importantly there is a lot of lots of noise happening here you can see it in the sky you can see it on the building and you can see it on the foreground as well so just something to kind of keep an eye on let's have a look at the size it's a decent size of the image so the noise must be coming from something else um so this one i think technically very well done although maybe not the best time of the day still technically excellent uh this one uh, there is a lot of noise and that would be the first thing i would be focusing to make sure that we you can remove that now to some point you can remove it in post-processing after that um you probably need to reshoot it to get the picture in the best better condition now the glow is another thing i would be looking at and that's again coming usually from trying to over process the picture maybe push the contrast or the exposure and that's when the glow start to really come out so keep an eye on that when it comes to composition loving this one now i wonder if you could have straightened it a little bit let's see in a geometry if it's something what we could do uh, probably no um let's see if we use the uh, uh, navigation lines so we could straighten it at least a little so we would do something like this and something like this and we would get something like this, which isn't bad at all. Let's just take a little bit more of it away and bring this down and get something like this. Yeah, I think it's a little bit cooler. Um, I'm, when it comes to architectural uh, and a subject like this, I really like when things are straight. Uh, I think it makes a little bit more no, uh, sense. Uh, however, it's completely up to you how you're going to do it, how you're going to crop it. I think as the main subject is the Art of Triumph, it's maybe good to leave it in the center. However, we can reset all of that and just keep looking at it from here. Again, what I really like on the composition is the movement of the cars. I think it really helps. Uh, the sky also really helps. Obviously, it's a lovely uh, capture. Uh, I would have probably tried to put it more in the center next time. And that's about it. Now, this one, I really like the reflection. I really like the corner. The leading lines really help with the flow. So well done there. Uh, maybe a little bit too much of a sky for me. I don't think you need all of that. Always good to follow the rule that if the part of the image doesn't really add anything to the storytelling. It doesn't need to be there. So I think a little bit of something like this is fine, but that's about as much as you need um, in order to help uh, the picture and explain what was happening. Gary, uh, when it comes to post-processing, keep an eye on your saturation. And that's one thing. There's a lots of lots of bright colors, lots of heavy contrast happening here. Uh, then see if you could do something with the noise. That would be my next suggestion. And also keep an eye on your white balance. And that's where I would leave it. You know, it's always good to maybe add a little bit of local adjustment with the vignette, uh, which I think some is here already. And that's about it. So Gary, thank you very much for sharing the photos with us. Uh, if you want us to review the rest of the other ones, make sure you send them for next week. And until next time, take care. Moving on the next photographer, we have a Greg. Greg, we have uh, two images from you. So 
a beautiful uh, steam train running through the landscape with lots of smoke happening here. Well done there. And then here, um, obviously, the coach going through the landscape. So let's have a look at both of them. So starting here, let's have a look at the information of the camera. And this was a Panasonic um, Leica lens and the settings were ISO 200, um, 52 millimeters f8 1 160th of a second now looking at 160th of a second i would be surprised if everything would be sharp and as you can see on it it isn't 100 percent sharp and that's because probably for something like this for moving subject like this you would really need to go with the shutter speed higher uh 300 400 just to be on the safe side and you should be fine there so that's just for uh, next time so obviously the landscape with this f-stop seems to be very sharp all the way through as you can notice um, that's because of the f8 however the main subject or the main story about the uh, card uh, or buggy um, really needed a faster shutter speed to make sure that everything is sharp it's not blurry however as it is the main subject you would want it a little bit more crisp i feel also the sun is must have been really full on because when you look at it almost your eyes are burning a little bit because because really you get lots of this green and you get lots of contrast and you get lots of shadows and um, it must have been really kind of midday uh, capture. Now, moving to this one, uh, obviously the time of the day is much nicer, lots of beautiful golden color, hitting the steam, hitting the train. I think uh, that really works very, very nicely. Uh, looking at your camera settings here, ISO 100, 25 millimeter, F5.6, 1 200 of the second. So 1 200 of a second, really depending on the speed of the train but again when i zoom in it's tiny bit soft and that's again because probably the 200 of a second isn't fast enough uh now on one side it's great that you keep in the iso to 100 but when it comes to a little bit lower light situation like this maybe go to 200 then you are able to increase the shutter speed and get these things in focus i think that always helps a little bit so they are just kind of things i would see on those two images when it comes to the technical capturing so this one uh, higher shutter speed to make sure this is in focus and making sure that my focus is actually set on the card on this one similarly higher shutter speed to make sure that the um, train is uh, in focus and sharp now moving on the composition now, this is great i actually don't have much to add here i like this kind of open space here in front of the train so the train has somewhere to go um I, I, it looks a little bit like it's tilting somewhere let's just have a look at the geometry if we would switch it to auto does it help not necessarily that crazy much i don't think uh, i think it's nice i think it's nice i think it's very storytelling the train is kind of arriving there is some foreground here there's lots of different colors and the golden color from the side and the light really works so let's leave it there now moving on this one i think you're missing a little bit of space here but even if you wouldn't have a space i think it's nice that it's arriving inside so that gives really nice flow what i would crop away is this uh half of the post here i think it doesn't really need to be there and probably a little bit of the top as well so i wonder if we could do a little bit of 16 or 9 um uh, crop but without the actual uh post here so we would get something like this and we could probably go even a little bit more and uh, that way okay we crop some of the trees but as there is so much of it it doesn't really matter we have these posts still here and then uh we much more focus on the actual um on the actual buggy here um so that's about it. now obviously looking at the uh looking at the white balance with that much green quite often the green start to leak in the rest of the image so if we would go into the color and look at the white balance and click on auto you can see how it immediately pushes the pink so let's see before after now what it does is the whatever supposed to be green stay green but the rest of the image the other parts loses the kind of green tint so i think that's helpful as well what i would do i would bring the exposure down a little and then um yes add a little bit of vignette but i wonder if actually i wouldn't add the vignette by using the masking radial gradient point it over my main subject then change the inward 
and then bring down the exposure so everything else other than the people uh, actually gets a little bit darker and my focus is straight onto the buggy now in the edits what we can do i would bring down a little bit of the saturation and push the vibrance and that's about it so this is where i would leave it just a little bit of something uh this is before this is after uh just to do something with it and this one actually nothing i would add i think it's very well done um the colors are nice the white balance is nice and it's very well edited and um you know i'm a huge fan of trains and this one is lovely so thank you so much greg thank you for sharing with us take care and uh, keep shooting and send us more photos whenever you can now moving on the next photographer we have a jay marik jay uh we have a uh, two black and white photos really kind of grungy uh high contrast photos so let's have a look at them uh, let's look here let's look at the information now on this one is a nikon z6 so same uh camera same lens so let's start with this one iso 100 36 millimeter f8 1 400 of a second now uh looking at the shadows and looking at the light obviously it was probably kind of midday or early afternoon still with quite strong light here because it creates really heavy shadows iso 100 is a great choice so you avoid any unnecessarily noise f8 is perfectly fine uh to be honest when i have items like this quite close to me i usually go more towards f11 just making sure that everything is nice and sharp and then one four hundred of a second is more likely what camera told you in this light condition to do and it worked very very well um the light yeah it's a little bit harsher unfortunately there's also not much uh texture happening in the sky but that's probably why you turn it to black and white and one thing i would keep an eye is your sensor dust which is kind of visible here and here um i don't think i see any other now there is a really easy way to uh, remove it there's another one here there's a really easy way to remove it in the post processing there is a full video on how to do it in the description so if you want to check it out you can go ahead and do it now moving on this one um let's have a look at the settings 100 iso which again is a great choice f8 for this scene is perfect and one 320th of a second is fine as well now again the light was really heavily hitting from here you get this really kind of heavy dark shadows here uh, but it creates really nice contrast and i think all in all it works quite well so that's it technically the sharpness is good uh the light is what it is so let's move on the composition now on this one i think i would follow the rule with of if there is a part of the image that doesn't give anything to the storytelling it doesn't need to be there and i think in this case it's definitely the sky so in this case crop it somewhere around 16 to 9 and really focus and add the main subject which is this mountain in this kind of golden uh crosses so something like this now maybe we could actually leave a little bit of the grass because i think that's quite helpful and do something like this again you want to make sure that everything is nice and straight maybe in geometry uh, so we didn't want to do this so let's see if we just push it a little bit like this and maybe more like this and then you get something like this much more kind of uh, cinematic look much more focus on the actual main subject and i think it looks really really cool and now the houses obviously help us with the scale so i think that's really helpful um what you're missing a little bit is some kind of strong foreground element but all in all very well done now looking at this one uh, this one is not as clear i think it's a bit difficult to say what it's about obviously there are some rocks there is some road however you kind of really focusing on this uh tree here uh and the crop is almost square so i think if you if this is really what you're talking about you i would have probably crop it all the way you know really just to look at the tree itself rather than anything else uh but um it's still quite okay i think some parts are kind of cropped away a little bit too visible for me um and again um, it's all a little bit too tight i would have gone probably two steps back to make sure that i have a little bit more space around the tree now talking about post-processing i think your black and white is actually very well done i really like that i think that's the kind of traditional styles with really darkening the sky which i think works i think on this one your shadows are a little bit over the top i think when you would print this they would be completely black uh, so it wouldn't be 
too pleasing. I would open them up a little bit, but then when I open them up, it seems like there is almost no details here. You can see when I hit this, um, yep, yeah, uh, if I do any, no. So uh, that's just something to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, I would open them a little at least to get some details here. Not crazily, but something like this. On this one, uh, I think it's much better, but you can still open the shadows just a little bit and then bring back some of the contrast with contrast. And that's about it. So black and white, very well done. Highly contrasty, quite likable. More keeping an eye on uh, the... Uh, shadows and the dark parts to make sure that you still get some details back. No, uh, thank you very much for sending us your photos. It was a lovely pleasure to review them. If you have more, make sure you send them to us in the future. Moving on, the next photographer we have a John Wilson. John, so what do we have here? Two kind of different photos um, with very specific edit, different kind of monotone uh, look. So let's look at them. John, uh, let's see if we have any uh, details of the camera. On this one, we don't. On this one, we just know that it was Canon 550D and the ISO was 100. Mm. So it's a shame if you can, for the next time, make sure you send us the camera details so we can tell you a little bit more. However, just from what I can see and on this kind of edit, there's a fair bit of noise happening here specifically in the darker areas, even with ISO 100. So that's a little bit strange. But other than that, the sharpness is quite pleasant. There is quite nice texture in the sky, which I think it's quite nice too. Um, uh, the light is interesting, but then it's been difficult to say what it was when you actually captured. Um, based on the name of the picture, I assume this is like olive trees. So that's quite cool. Um, also, maybe it's a panel because you're getting a little bit of overlap here. So something to kind of keep an eye on in post-processing in the future. And that's about it. Now, looking at this one, two pigeons sitting right here uh, or doves. Um, quite nice details at the back. The sharpness is quite good. This one is touch soft. When you look at it with me, you see how uh, the kind of main parts are sharp, but then the movement of the uh, bird isn't. Uh, on this one, it's a little bit better. Um, it's a kind of interesting capture. I know what you're trying to do as a framing. Uh, the light is okay. It's creating quite nice contrast, but a little bit of a dark edge. But all in all, um, technically, I think it's quite okay. I like the exposure. I like the background being with still some texture, so it's not just completely blurry thing. Um, all I would probably keep an eye on is the sharpness on the animals. Now, talking about composition, uh, what I would say, and anytime I see a pictures of the birds, uh, specifically when it's something like this, I always like to keep a little bit more space around them, a little bit more breathable space. I know you're trying to show both of them, which is perfectly fine, but um, I think they are a bit too close to the edges. So there is usually human eye straight into the center of the picture and that's where you go from for the rest of the image. In this case, you look at the center, there's nothing. And then you kind of look in at the two subjects. So something to kind of keep an eye on. If you wouldn't need them, two of them, then you could really do something uh, crazy, you know, really just kind of create maybe something like this. And then suddenly you're starting to get something really interesting. But if you want to show both of them, I think you kind of let me... Uh, reset it. Uh, you kind of wanna, uh, you wanna have a little bit more space around them. Again, this one could be cool if you would capture it maybe more like uh, this. Uh, Let's say again, this is in the center and you would get something like this, which is also very interesting. So you could actually get two really cool pictures out of it uh, with a bit more space around them compared to this, where there's a lot of space where nothing is happening in the middle. Now on this one composition, I really like how you have one third of the sky. I think that works very well when it comes to balance of the composition. So you have a one third of the sky, two thirds of the ground. That's really nice. The trees help us with the uh, depth together with this kind of foreground here. So I think that's very cool too. Um, what's missing is a little bit of a flow. Um, so you kind of, there isn't really nothing guiding. And in overall, you're looking at it and you're just kind of wondering a little bit, what is the image about? What is it you're trying to say? It's a lots of trees 
but then it's a lot of trees, you know, so uh, just to be a little bit more visible about the main subject would probably be helpful. Now, talking about post-processing, I'm not going to really say something because I think it's very unique what you created here. I have nothing against it. This monotone isn't necessarily my style, but I think it would work. I actually think it's something what could be easily printed and be put on a wall because it's just so different. It's your work. Uh, there is nothing technically even when it comes to processing, really wrong with it. It's not overburn, oversaturated or anything like that. So all in all, quite well done. It's a lovely idea and keep doing and trying and seeing what comes out of it. Now on this one in the post-processing, you turn it to black and white, trying to make it a little bit more interesting, but I would probably more focus on the composition on this one. I don't think there is anything that wrong with the post-processing. It's more the composition where I would keep an eye on and see what you can do a little bit differently for the future. And also making sure that the birds are in focus, both of them. Now then, John, thank you so much uh, for sending us your photos. It was a pleasure to review them. Take care and keep shooting and editing. We can't wait to see more of your photos in the future. Now we have two more images here from Linton. Linton, Linton, this Linton, almost looks like image from earlier one give me one second uh, this looks very similar to this that's sometimes really funny but anyway linton let's jump to it let's have a look what we have here so this incredible incredible rainbow with three different sides and parts of the darkness and uh, exposure so that is very very cool and uh, epic shot and this one with a kind of nice strong foreground nice middle ground and then a lovely sky and everything so let's have a look at them let's see if we have any details here and we have so this one was with canon rp um your lens 24 to 105 and what about your settings iso 100 24 millimeters f 7.1 1 60th 1 1 60th of a second uh, when it comes to uh, camera settings there is absolutely nothing wrong with you i think the camera setting is spot on that's exactly what i would be looking for keeping the iso nicely down to make sure that everything that you don't add any noise uh, through the camera f7.1 is good keeping everything nice and sharp and 1 60th of a second will give you this kind of freeze effect so the water and the sky will be very defined full of details almost like frozen now when i zoom in even though your iso is showing like 100 i see lots of noise which is really confusing so either this was a, like a hdr or you try to add a grain in post-processing or i'm just not sure why are you getting so much noise all over the image so if you know and if it was something you were trying to do artistically please make sure that you write me in a comment so i can kind of find out and learn more about the idea what you are trying to do but there is a lot of noise all across including the sky and that is probably the one main thing i would focus on when it comes to the technical part when you look at the numbers they look right but then when you look at the actual picture it says something else now when we look at this one uh different camera so this was canon 600d uh the lens 24 to 105 which i believe is the same uh, ISO 124 millimeters f7.1 1 25th of a second so obviously the rainbow is very very nice lovely gradient scale um but then we look in and we look at the sheep and we look at the landscape and it's really really soft so something to keep an eye on how could you get a little bit more sharpness would be one thing i would be focused on now 1 25th of the second if you didn't have a tripod based on my experience could be the reason why there is a little bit of a softness um to be honest i'm not crazily um, um focused on this because obviously it's all about the rainbow however it's still worth to mention so we make sure that we learn and continue pushing ourselves forward now when it comes to composition on this one even though i absolutely love the rainbow and i know it's all about it uh, to add a balance to it i really wish that there would be a little bit more of the ground you ideally would have at least one third because it would have made visually a little bit more sense and more balance so if i have to say you would be probably looking for something like this mm, ideally and suddenly 
and that, that, that it has nothing to do with what we like. It's to do with what's generally recognized as a composition. And suddenly there is like more happening, more, it's more kind of fulfilling. There's more balance to it and so on. So that's just something to kind of do for the future. However, I have to say the rainbow is epic and the light is incredible. So that's about what I would do here on this one, just to balance it. I would probably crop a little bit of it here. Um, so just maybe a little bit here. So then I get those, then I get those two rocks in the center and just keep an eye on the horizon to make sure it is that it's nice and straight. So probably more something like this. And that's about, uh, that's about it. I really like the foreground. There is a nice piece of foreground. So it really visually works here. These rocks really help us with the depth. The one third of a sky is really what works here. So you're trying to do one third of a sky, two thirds of a land or two thirds of a sky, one third of a land. That's generally the formula. Other than that, incredible picture. Absolutely love it. Well done. Thank you for sharing it with us. And, uh, and uh, really pleasure. What I would focus here on in post-processing would be totally uh, noise and see how you can remove it as there is a way to do it. That would be my main worry here. On this one, trying to see if I can bring some sharpness here. Other than that, leave it because it's just as epic as you imagine. Beautiful, beautiful capture. You don't get to see rainbows like this every day. Neither the capturing it. So well done. Ling Dong, thank you so much for sharing us with your photos. Take care. And if you have more, make sure you send them to us in the future. Moving to Patrick. Patrick send us two of his incredible panoramas and one Montmartre capture. Patrick, unfortunately, only two pictures per week per photographer. So we'll come back to Montmartre next week and we'll have a look at your panoramas because they are epic. This is such a cool picture. Uh, again, um, this is just under Sacre Care. Beautiful view of Paris, uh, beautifully captured, stunning. Uh, sunset here so well done there lovely colors not too many people as well so well done for that and all in all excellent excellent capture so let's have a look if we have any details here this is with your camera uh, a7 mark 4 uh, 24 to 70 lens iso 100 f8 1 1 25th of a second so obviously i'm assuming this is panorama so several pictures stitched together the setting is spot on iso 100 making sure that we're keeping it nice and clean without any additional noise f8 is perfect for this type of photo and 1 125th of a second is also great capture making sure that you have a lovely uh, texture in the sky and the details all across just one thing which kind of uh brought my attention is this kind of sensor does here really easy to remove uh with your kind of remove tool here and there's maybe one more here so just something to kind of keep an eye on because such a picture deserve to be fixed on every detail okay technically brilliant sharpness all the way through beautiful 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 and on this one let's have a look at the camera details so same camera Mm, I believe same lens. Yep. And then uh, settings ISO 100 F8 1 60th of a second spot on 1 60th of a second. Still very good for even handheld capture. Love the details in the lampos. Beautiful texture in the sky. Great colors. Um, uh, yeah, a little bit of contrasty in the bottom part here, but all in all together, very romantic and very nice. Almost kind of monotone look like, but beautiful. Now let's have a look and talk about composition and artistic feel. So you can always wish for things. I think in your case, it's not necessarily that you would have done differently, but you wish this tree wouldn't be there. That's one thing, always looking at the edges and looking at these kind of elements that just kind of poke from somewhere. Uh, so I just wish this wouldn't be there or maybe you could remove it in Photoshop if possible. Other than that, the scene is epic and almost kind of signature when it comes to uh, Paris. Uh, the bridge is beautiful. The tree here works really well. The lights are stunning. Uh, this path actually helps a little bit with the depth. Um, the, the the house here as well nicely done with making sure that this tree is in a full frame so all in all other than this tree here uh composition wise very well done this one superb um 
beautifully done a really nice foreground here opening the scene then a really nice big portion of the city visible uh, the sun a little bit hidden behind the tree but making it all kind of work very well excellent colors and all in all great picture so that brings me to the post processing here and other than the little bit of a noise here absolutely nothing great saturation great white balance great balance between the shadows and highlights exposure contrast beautiful well done love it on this one, I'm not 100% sure about the white balance, and it's just because somehow the sky, the sky has this kind of orangey pastel colors, and then you have this uh, building which just have a little bit different white balance. You also what you're also getting is a little bit of a white glow here, so something to kind of keep an eye on for the future. Another thing which I would keep an eye on are these really dark areas. And it doesn't matter how much I kind of brighten my monitor. I would just keep an eye on them because if you would print this, I think these areas would be almost 100% black. So that's just a few of my notes. Other than that, again, very nice, very romantic and beautiful, beautiful capture. So Patrick, thank you so much again for sharing your photos with us. It's a pleasure and I hope to see more pictures in the future. Two more photographers. We have a Rashid from our Clever Photographer Academy. Rashid, um, Two pictures here, um, I think just kind of something to work on. We already talked about it several times before. This one is a little bit better than the first one, but as we talk about it, the main thing for you, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with your technical skills, but the composition and the composition starts with finding the elements which you want to capture and then trying to see how you could capture it the best. Now we went through composition rules in a group. You can see them again and see how you can implement them in, in order to make it work so let's have a look quickly what you use to capture and there is no camera details on those so starting on this one and uh, as much as try i'm trying not to be negative and trying to be constructive the light isn't the greatest obviously there is lots of strong light with a little bit of heavy shadow so something to keep an eye on it's always better to go shoot in the afternoon or earlier in the morning to get a little bit of softer light um also, um, there is a little bit of noise happening here. Um, ba -ba -ba, here, here. Uh, so that's something else. Um, also, what would really help, I think, here would be maybe to use a little bit of depth, maybe to try to, f if this is what you want to capture, to focus on that and try to make the background a little bit blurrier would be helpful as well. Now, talking about this one, no details here neither. However, again, trying to figure out what is the main message, what you're trying to show. It's not really a path, but let's say it's at least a path through the trees. Uh, it's not very balanced. You have a little bit of tree here and then a little bit of cut tree here as well. It's nicer light. The Definitely, there is a little bit of glow. So when it comes to light, this is a little bit nicer, but still a lot to work on. Uh, when we come to composition, I think you have a lot of snow here, which doesn't really need to be there. So I would crop it away to get something like this. And then to balance it off, since you have just a little bit of tree here, I would probably cut a little bit of tree here as well and get something like this. And suddenly you're getting something a little bit more nicer, crop maybe a little bit of the top. And if you go to effects and add to it a little bit of a vignette, you're getting something interesting. So that's where I would leave it, Rashid. Uh, keep an eye on a white balance. It's a little bit on a blue side. So when we go into the color and look at the auto, we don't want it as yellow, but maybe something like this would actually help. Now, moving on this one, first thing, it needs to be geometrically right. So you go into geometry, push on auto, that really sort the edges. Now then, this part is also really unnecessarily there. So we would crop it away, something like this. And then you just need to kind of try to figure out what is the main subject. So if it's the playground, then you get something like this. You get the main subject in the center and there you have it. Bring down a little bit of the exposure to take off the like a strong strong light and leave it from there maybe in effect add a little bit of a vignette and then you get something like this this would also look quite cool in black and white if you would want to you can push the contrast and get something like this anyway rashid thank you very much for sending us your photos as always composition really working on the main subject and trying to figure out what is it you're trying to say would be my suggestion to you 
And then we're going to Zdeniek, final landscape photographer of the week. Zdeniek, all the way from South Africa, brought us this tree right here. So let's have a look at it. Let's see if we have any camera details. And we have, so still Canon 600D, the lens this time 18 to 55 millimeters, and the settings ISO 100, F10, and 1 250th of a second. So camera setting is spot on. ISO 100, again, making sure that everything is without any additional color or digital noise. Uh, F10, quite good, seeing that the element is quite near to you. And 1 250th second, just give us enough to be able to maybe get a little bit of a texture in the sky and nice details. Now, all in all, quite strong light with quite strong shadow here. That's a one thing. And then I see these artifacts around the tree, like here, here some brushes here, down here as well. So that's one thing I would kind of keep an eye on to make sure that it's not as visible. I don't see it at the rest of the image, which is interesting, just at this part. So I don't know if there was something there what you try to remove, but just keep an eye on it. Technically, uh, the camera setting we talk about, the sharpness is good, the light is a little bit harsh, and that's about it. Now, when it comes to composition, this actually is quite nicely placed in a kind of third. So I think that works really nice. There is a lot of space around it. A really strong foreground. You almost wish there is a mountain here or something, but still quite nice, simple capture of the image. Quite like it. Uh, and I think it's very well done. Lots of texture, lots of colors. Really pretty. Now, when we come to post-processing, I would keep an eye on my white balance just to make sure what does auto do. Uh, push the white, right? So not as much white, but maybe a little bit of the tint. Definitely bring down the exposure just a little bit. And then as always with this one, local adjustments, you know, to making sure that it's not as flight. There's a lot of light, but everything is kind of light. So let's have a look if we can add linear gradient, close the picture from the top a little bit. Uh, and then maybe again from the bottom. Uh, so it's just something like this and leave it from there. Let's have a look if we maybe remove just a little bit of the saturation and then push the vibrance and add a little bit of the contrast. And that's it. So Zdenik, here it is. Thank you as always. Such a pleasure to see your photos. I hope to see more of them in the future, especially the ones with the animals. If you have more, I would definitely love to see them. So. Folks, for all of you, for the rest of you, uh, if you want to join us, make sure you head to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash review. That's where you can find all the dates, upcoming dates, links, and information about how you can join us already for the next week's episode of Photography Review Show. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Jacob Bors. It was a pleasure. And until next time, keep shooting.